Thank you. As a chemist, I want to find ways to make connections faster. Just like Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite. A few years ago, I was on my path to become the next Nobel. Mr. Nobel was rejected by three women and never married. I was rejected countless times in three countries and never had a girlfriend. Mr. Nobel had a lot of money to set up a Nobel Prize. I had a lot of time to experiment a PhD project and call it the chemical solution to create relationships. After four years of disciplined, tedious, painstaking research, today is the first time I review the results. Are you ready? Um, are you still awake? <laughs> the Nobel Prize goes to the chemical reaction curve which explains how all reactions happen, including your love reaction. I know this is a little bit technical, so bear with me. Reactions move from left to right. Molecules will start at the initial energy level, where this arrow is. For a reaction to happen, they will need to overcome an energy barrier to form the connections and to reach the lower energy, more stable stage. And now, let's replace the molecules with humans. And the curve is the same. For a romantic reaction to happen, there is a similar barrier. Anxiety, cultural differences, stereotyping, they could all be part of this barrier. So I attempt to uh, plot a few typical curves, so you know the difference among us. For average management students, the curve looks like this. Oh, you need a small jump. For average engineering students, <laughs> the curve looks like this. Oh, you need an Olympic jump. And for me, the curve looks like this. <laughs> I need a rocket to the moon. But at least the potential relationship could still be stable, theoretically. So you may wonder, what about those very attractive people like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? I think the curve looks like this. Now the barrier is a trap, and the relationship is a higher energy level, which means unstable. That reminds me of the high divorce rates in Hollywood. So you're still wondering, hey, what does this curve do with my love life? Now let me show you something really, really amazing. The Arrhenius equation which defines the relationship between the height of the energy barrier and the reaction speed. High energy barrier means low reaction rate and low success rate. So I just want to flash back so you can all look at this curve and the equation again. Isn't it beautiful? I mean love immediately. I invite all of you to join me after this event to run a few calculations. <laughs> so you probably really want to ask this question. How can I make my romantic reactions faster? I have a good news. In chemistry, one of the most effective ways to make reaction faster, to reduce the energy barrier, is an agent called catalyst. Catalyst can create a shortcut, 
and make reactions happen faster and easier. Catalysts are widely used in the chemical industry, in food industry, and even in your cars. So next time, ask your car dealer, where is the catalyst? He will definitely respect you. I believe there are also plenty of catalysts for our romantic relations. Probably the most obvious is alcohol. <laughs> so what about uh, humor and fashion, flirty eye contact? I don't know. Everyone is different. But let's find out. For years, I tried to explain my catalyst theory to girls, and they would immediately lose interest. <laughs> I think I needed to ask myself the question, where is my catalyst? And I started to wonder, chemists also struggle to find catalysts sometimes. So how do they succeed? They typically will start with good idea, theories, then they perform a lot of tests, experiments, trial and errors, resulting in unpleasant smell, small explosions, evacuation of the building. But if they are lucky, ta -da, the discovery of the cat a list. But hold on, hold on. The process does not stop here. Chemists will go back to revisit their theory, improve their understandings, then more tests, more evacuations, but resulting in better catalysts. And this entire cycle is the real secret to find today's super catalyst. Now, I find a ticket to become a better man. Then accidentally I opened some dating experts' websites. <laughs> oh, no, no. I found out that they stole my idea. They also used this super cycle to find relationship catalysts. But instead of creating small explosions in the lab, they improved through ridiculous amounts of rejections. And that was exactly my problem. I did not carry out discipline trial and error. I stuck with this terrifying situation where I have to confess to my date. Let me be frank with you right now. I'm just doing experiments. Well, I, I, I really like you. You are the lucky batch number 27. <laughs> and I failed previous 26. Her face shows surprise, horror, anger within half a second. Then her cocktail flies right into my face. <laughs> that never happened. But what really happened was that I let my opportunities pass by, living a lonely life in the middle of chemicals, just like Mr. Nobel. Luckily, I finally turned on this cycle, and I found my catalyst. I call it the Chinese Casanova cocktail. One part Chinese food, two parts improvised storytelling with a little bit of salsa shake and lots, lots of alcohol. <laughs> Voila, enjoy. And it was so powerful that I only used it once on my wife. <laughs> we first had a chemistry and it quickly turned into physics. <laughs> and now, after we got married, we're blessed by the biological consequences. 
So you see, our romantic relations have a lot in common with science. And with this super cycle, you don't need to be a chemist to find your catalyst. Thank you.